Okay, let's talk about HTML tables. Now, back in the early days of the internet, uh, I'm talking back in the 90s, before CSS came around, tables were actually used to create HTML layout. So you were building a web page and you wanted to have a header, a sidebar, a main area. People would use HTML tables to create that. Since CSS came around and then we got float so we could use divs and float to move things around, that became the preferred practice. Now we have Flexbox and CSS Grid. Lots better options to build layouts. But tables still have a place, which is their original intended purpose. If you have data, tabular data that you want to put on a page, tables are how you do it. So let's look at the HTML and then we'll talk a little bit about the CSS. You have a table tag which wraps around the whole table. Inside of that, you optionally have a caption that you can add. And with CSS, I can put it at the top or the bottom. Then Again, optionally, you have columns that you can define. Now, these are not where you put the information. These are solely for the purpose of, I want to be able to target a column with my CSS to do a background or something like that. That's what we would use these for. Um, you can add a span property here. So I've got one column, which is going to be this blank one right here. And then, actually, I should have two here. Let's do it like this. There we are. So I have one column, which is this empty one with just these titles for the meals. I have one for Sunday. I have one that spans my weekdays and then one for Saturday at the very end. Now, these don't get used a lot, but they are available to you. Next, we define the table head and the table body. These are the two main areas. There is also a T foot, but it rarely gets used. Uh, typically, people will have a caption that they want to include, and they use the caption tag, not the T foot, to do that. But if you wanted to put headings like this at the bottom as well, you could quite easily put the T foot. Now, the convention is to actually add the T foot right here in between the head and the body. The reason for that is how the browsers render these tables. They will look at the table tag and then they say, okay, where's the top and the bottom? Here's the head, here's the foot. That'll put those two things together. Then it can render things around that while filling in the data, which is the T body. All right, I'm going to just comment this line out. I don't need that. T body. So the table body and the table head, they both have TRs. These are table rows. So this is how you define the data by creating rows. Inside those rows, we have two, ta two tags that we can use TH and TD. TH is table header, TD is table data. If you make something a TH, it will be by default bold and centered inside of the element. If you make something a TD, it will not be bold. It will be left aligned by default. Unless, of course, you're using a language on the page which is right to left, in which case it'll be right aligned by default. But the headers will always be centered. Now, this vertical text here, this is something I'm doing with the CSS. I wouldn't normally get that. Normally, without any CSS, these are going to be written straight across here. Okay, so we have all these different elements on our page. You can see I'm having pizza for breakfast every day. It's a wonderful week. Um, the yellow highlighting here, this is something that I'm doing in CSS. Now, it's a little bit of a hack that you can do if you want to target and highlight things. I'm... For doing the rows, it's quite simple. It's just a background color on hover. But to do these, what we're actually doing is we're adding some content in behind here, and we're saying that it extends 100% above and below. So we're making this giant yellow line. Then we're setting the overflow to hidden on the table. And I'm actually setting a background color of white here and also behind this caption at the top to hide that yellow part at the top. So that way it's only showing up inside the table cells. Okay, um, yeah, let's move on to the CSS. So right up to the top, we have border collapse. Now this is a property on the table itself. Collapse is usually what you want to do, but we can have separate as the value. If you do that, I don't know how well you can see it here, but there's this little white gap that appears here. Um, back in the old days when before CSS, in the table, you would have things like cell padding 
and cell spacing that you would define on cells on the table. And these described how much, basically, padding and margin that you wanted on all your THs and TDs. We don't want any of these things in here. We're using CSS to control the padding, the margin, and so on. The only property that we have to watch out for is this border collapse. So by default, you put borders in here, there will be a little bit of space that's automatically added in here. This is the default. So we want to have border collapse set to collapse so that we don't have extra space around any borders that we define. Caption side, well, we can do top, we can do bottom to move the caption up or down, whatever we want. And border that you define on the table is simply the border that goes around the table. So if I change this to red, you can see there's my red border that goes all the way around. The bottom one is a border bottom on my TR. And where is that one right here? Here we go. So the style on my TR, my table row, I'm saying every row has a border on the bottom, which is this light gray color. I can change that one to green. And you can see right here, right here, right here, and right here. Those are my four TRs. And the border is being put on the bottom of each of those. Now it's interesting to note, the red doesn't show up on the bottom because of the green. It's the same thing with backgrounds. There's this layering going on with tables. So you've got a background for your table, then there's a background for the T head and the T body. Then on top of that, there's a background for the TR. On top of that is a background for the TH or the TD. So you have all of these stacks and in behind there, you've also got the, um, on top of the table, you've got the background for the columns too. So there's all this layering going on and you have to make sure that when you're setting these, you've got your layering set correctly. If you are going to be using multiple colors, you want to make sure that you've got the layers figured out so you're setting the background on the proper thing. Now my TH and my TD, I've got padding on the top and bottom left and right of 0.5 REMs. If I click on one of these down in here, I should be able to... Yeah, it's pretty faint here. I don't know how if you can see it, but the dev tools are showing up to show me where the padding is. So I've got this little gap here, little gap here, and on the top and the bottom. So I'm keeping the text away from the edges by using padding. Okay, the vertical text that we have inside of here, this is a combination of two properties. So the writing mode can be horizontal top to bottom or vertical right to left or left to right. This is going to rotate the direction and then text orientation is the individual characters. If I want them to be upright or mixed, which is the default, this is how they look with the mixed. Or if I want them to be able to be read vertically, that was the upright that we had before. Like that. So each of the individual characters gets rotated with that. Empty. You can use the empty pseudo class, which is this one right here, my TH that is inside the T head. If we come down here, here it is. This first one, I put nothing inside there. I didn't even put a non-breaking space. I just left it completely empty. Now my CSS can target this to color it, do something else with it. We could put an image in there, we could do something. I just chose to set it to a light gray background. Light gray background. See, I could do something like that. There's goal being set on there. Okay, uh, the hover. So the highlighting that we were doing down in here, targeting individual rows and columns. TR hover, that's all it takes to do the individual rows. So as I move up and down, the row being highlighted, that's all it takes. The vertical one is a little bit more challenging. For this, we have to do position relative on the TDs and the THs that are inside the body. Then we're going to use the after or the before pseudo class, the combination of relative with absolute and a Z index of negative one is going to put this yellow background in behind the TH and the TD. So whatever content is inside here, this background color with no content is going to be placed in behind. So let's change the color on this one to, uh, oh, I don't know, um, we'll do cornflower blue. That'll stand out. There you can see that as I move around, 
the vertical one, that's being added by this after, or it could be before. It'll work either way. The top, negative 5,000 pixels, so the top is way off the top of the page. The height, 10,000 pixels, bigger than any screen is going to be. Width is 100% of the cell. So we're creating this giant vertical line that goes all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. Now we have to do table overflow hidden so we don't see it everywhere. If I remove that, there you can see that the line is extending above and below the table. My caption has a white background because of this right here. That's why there's a white gap behind meal plan here. Without that, you would see the blue there as well. So it is the overflow hidden property. That's what keeps it contained inside the table. All right, so that's a bit of a hack for highlighting columns and rows. Here's some basic examples of styling that you can do. So I will put all of this into CodeGist for you so you can have a copy of that. Um, one other note, things that you can do inside of a table. If you had something in the table, let's say I want to take this sub and I want to extend it all the way through all three rows, we can add a property inside of here to say that we're going to do a row span three. Now I'm going to come up into here, remove one of those, and come down here, or actually let's do the pizza one. Yeah, we should start at the, you should start at the top of it and move down. So I'm not going to extend this one. It's the pizza we're going to extend. Here's the pizza coming down through here. Now we can see that these two have stuck off the end because we have a little bit too much space here. So let's remove, here, we'll just comment out burger and we'll comment out pizza. There we are. Now we're back to having the eight columns in every row and this one extends the full size. So it does a row span of three. We can also make something call span to make it go across. So my craft dinner, let's get rid of the salad, you know, be really healthy, get rid of the salad and replace it with craft dinner. Okay. And salad is the one that we're going to comment out. There we are. So now craft dinner extends two columns. That's why we get the two columns being highlighted here. All right. So that should give you everything that you need to build tables. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.